Hello, it's Matt and welcome to Collaboration Coach. And this is the Office 365 Roadmap Radar for September 2020. The Roadmap Radar is all about what's new in Office 365. And we've scoured the roadmap for any new updates so you don't have to. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to make sure that you don't miss anything. This month, we've got lots of great new features for lists and teams, so let's get into it. Let's start with Microsoft Lists. You may already have the new Microsoft Lists homepage added to your tenant and you're busily creating new lists. It's in the process of rolling out, so some people have it and some people don't. And some of the other features that were described earlier in the year will be rolling out through September. For instance, the card and calendar views and the new rules creator for custom workflow and the commenting system are all rolling out through September. I've started to make some videos in August on lists and I'll do a proper review once all the major features have been rolled out in September. Microsoft will also start to roll out the list app for Teams this month. This feature will make your lists available to you in Teams. You'll be able to add the list app as a channel tab and then manage the list just like you would from the list app or from SharePoint. You can add data and columns, you can filter, sort and format your data, and you'll also be able to start a conversation about a list as well. This update will roll out in September and is due to finish in October. On to SharePoint, and a new feature is being added that allows site owners to set a default template for anyone creating pages or news on their site. SharePoint site owners will be able to set the default template in the page Template Picker. The default template will be pre-selected when an editor opens the template picker, but they'll also be able to pick a different template if they want to. This is already rolling out now and should be complete by the end of September. This one is for SharePoint admins and Microsoft are refreshing the SharePoint administration page for Office 365 tenants and they're adding a new migration page. So all the various migration options are being pulled together in one page and you can use the migration manager to move file shares. You can use the SharePoint migration tool for SharePoint on-premises moves and the new mover option for cloud migrations. This should be in your tenants now. Now a new feature for OneDrive called move and keep sharing. Today, if you move a file that's already been shared, it loses the sharing settings. For example, if I move a file from OneDrive to SharePoint, I'll need to set up the sharing again in SharePoint. This new move and keep sharing feature will allow you to keep the sharing settings if you want to. This feature is rolling out now and should be complete by the end of September. The Teams app notification settings page is getting a refresh. It's been simplified so there are less options to choose from. There will be just two profiles that will join all the settings together. So you can get all the notifications from one or just ones where you are mentioned or replied to in the other. There'll also be a third that will let you configure them in more detail to get them just the way you like. This update is rolling out during September. Now a new feature for Teams that will prevent everyone from joining a meeting automatically. Because currently the default setting for Teams meetings is that everyone in your organization can just join. But Microsoft are rolling out a new setting that will allow only the organizer to join automatically. Everyone else will have to be admitted by the organizer. So this is a very restrictive setting, but will be useful in scenarios where you need to closely manage who attends and when they join. Like teachers scheduling a meeting for a class of students, for example. The new setting can be set by the Teams administrator and be applied to the whole tenant and will be called organizer only. If it's done this way, it will automatically apply to all Teams meetings, but can be overridden by the organizer from the meeting options page. This feature will be rolling out in September. Next, the Teams meeting recording system is being updated to include a download of the transcript. When the meeting's finished, you'll be able to view and download the video and the transcript together from the meeting chat. One caveat, at the moment, live transcription only supports spoken English. You'll need to make sure that the allow cloud recording and allow transcription settings are switched on in the team admin center for this to work. And this change is rolling out between September and October. Teams already provides live captions as a way to follow along and read the text of what's being said in the meeting. 
Microsoft are also adding something they call speaker attribution to the captions. This will put the name of the speaker next to what's being said in the captions. This started rolling out in August and should be available to everyone by the end of September. Microsoft is also refreshing the joining experience for Teams meetings. This should make it easier for you to select audio and video settings before you join the meeting. You'll be able to turn your video on and off, select your background filters and manage your devices. And there'll be a much clearer section where you can manage your own audio and add Teams meeting rooms as well. This will be rolling out during September. So that's your roadmap radar for September 2020. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.